So welcome everybody. My name is Andy Rivenus. I'm a product manager for database and memory. And uh, this is going to be the, we've done a lot of these Ask Tom Office Hour sessions, but we starting the new year and happy new year to everybody. We have a new look, if you might've noticed on our um, Ask Tom Office Hours landing page. So the Ask Tom system got updated the end of middle end of December. And so this is a new, a little bit of a new format for us. So I was gonna just point out that um, not only do we have today's session on the landing page, um, we'll be doing one in February. Actually, I'm hoping to do it on autonomous database now that uh, database and memory is available on an autonomous database. So that's the tease for, for next month. So we'll see if I can get the autonomous guys to help me out and we'll kind of go through how you might make use of database of memory on autonomous database dedicated. Um, all of our previous replays, so this format's a little different. I'll just kind of review real quick. Um, uh, so our previous sessions are all listed. Um, I have some links because, for instance, the database of memory, uh, the vectorized, in-memory vectorized joins that first was introduced in 21C and that we're gonna talk about today as a, the enhancements to that is available. And I have a couple of slides as to kind of review, but that was back in August of 21, but we have a lot of sessions here that you can scroll through. And then I think, yep, still at the end, we have uh, some links for resources, um, the documentation, um, our uh, blog page, uh, other, um, Oracle on oracle.com, other stories like customer stories and things. Um, and then I have in here on this section, we have, um, I have a uh, GitHub link and I'll have it in the presentation as well. And it's on our resources page, which I probably should bring up as well on our blog. So blogs.oracle.com. So if I can go back here. Oh, nope, that's not going to go. So sorry on our blogs.oracle.com page. Sorry, I thought I had it there. Um, we have our new, for instance, I've done, done actually, if you want to more details, and I have a link in the presentation, but I did a blog on some of the features that we're going to talk about today. But um, there is our resources page here, or you can go directly to it. And in there, I have links to all sorts of stuff, including Ask Tom and the GitHub link if you uh, want to go look. I'll have today's presentation and then the scripts and the uh, output that I'm going to use. We're going to do most of our work today in Oracle Database on 23C free. So um, you could try this out for yourself. So um, all sorts of details, but all of this is, is linked in here. So you can get to to all of that and um, try things out for yourself if you want. So enough of that. And if you have any questions, even if they're not about uh, in-memory in -memory vectorized joins, please feel free to post questions in the Q&A and I will try to answer those questions as well as we go. Um, but in, uh, so that takes care of uh, housekeeping, I think. And since you all made it here, you've all figured out that we have a new Ask Tom uh, environment. And so let's get started. There we go. So we'll go ahead and uh, for me, I'll reduce that. And uh, so again, my name is Andy Rivenus. My email address is there if you want to ask a question, if you don't feel comfortable in the chat, or if later something occurs to you, if you want to get a hold of me, Feel, please feel free. My email address is there. You can follow me on Twitter. And again, there's the URL for our blog um, as well. So there's plenty of information on the web. And you can just Google for database and memory. We have a lot of stuff that will pop up uh, or go right directly to the links. So in-memory vectorized joins. We actually introduced in-memory vectorized joins in 21C. And I kind of showed you that we did an Ask Tom office hours session back in August of 21 um, that kind of went over uh, uh, vectorized joins. And so um, what we're going to talk about today is the new enhanced features that we've added in 23C. But as a review, I have a link there to that other session 
really what we're talking about is being able to leverage SIMD vector processing as part of the hash join um, probe uh, um, facility. So um, we're trying to speed up hash joins. It, previously in 21C, we only supported basically a single level hash join. And the news in 23C is where we've expanded that to a bunch of other joins so that we can hopefully make uh, some improved performance on other in-memory join hash joins and, and other types of in-memory hash joins. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. We're trying to expand our use of uh, single instruction, multiple data, SIMD vector processing to speed up the, the ability to do the actual join itself. And so I have these uh, slides are taken basically from previous session. But what I wanted to do was point out, and I had this slide from a couple of different, I've used it a couple of different times, it kind of describes how a hash join works. And then really the part that, that I wanted to point out was that the, it's the probe, and I'll, let me go back real quick, get that out of there. It's the, 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 the join process itself where we're joining one or more tables together um, where we're increasing the performance there using SIMD vector processing. So you can see this a little, I put this little, the, the icon for our vectorized joins here because it's when we're doing that match um, that we're actually gonna, we're speeding that part of it up. And so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of where this fits in the join processing. And so with database and memory, we can use bloom filters um, even without bloom filters, but we can use SIMD vector processing to, to make that faster um, and with some of the other types of joins, which I'll describe in a, in a minute or two. So kind of just wanted to give a review and, and point out where this fits in the hash join processing. Um, it's controlled by a, uh, a parameter. It's still controlled by this, this, you know, 23C is basically well, everything previous, but really the 21C features plus 23C together um, since 21C was an innovation release. 19C was the last um, long-term release and 23C will be the next long-term release. So uh, we kind of try to combine a lot of the, the, when we talk about, when I talk about 23C, a lot of the stuff we did in 21C because not everybody was able to take advantage of that since um, a lot of folks stayed on 19C and didn't, maybe didn't even experiment with 21C, I don't, I don't know for sure, but we had a lot of features we added in 21C that then obviously get carried forward into 23C. One of those, deep vectorization, and so that's the, the framework, and we, what we've done in 23C is built upon that framework to add support for a bunch of new hash join, uh, hash join types, if you will. And so there's a initialization parameter, defaults to true, there's really very little reason to ever turn it off, although we'll, I'll show you uh, and when we get to um, comparisons that you can actually turn it off if you wanna see uh, the difference that the vectorization's making in your query plans. So it is possible and it wouldn't be Oracle if we didn't give you the ability to control things and a lot of choices. So, but it does default up true. So that's a new parameter starting in 21C that's also in 23C. Um, how do you tell if you're using in a deep vector join? Same as um, actually join groups is this way, and then in-memory join groups. And then um, in 21C, we introduced this as part of a SQL Monitor Active Report. If you click on the binoculars at the hash join level, you'll see information here, and you can see that it'll tell you deep vector or deep vectorization hash joins. If it's a one, that means we took advantage of uh, hash joins. If it's a zero, we didn't, or maybe it probably won't even show up actually. Um, but if it's a one, and then hash join flags, which really isn't uh, more of an internal thing, not really uh, pertinent to what we're worried about is basically it's just the fact that in this case, this join did make use of in-memory vectorization. There is a second way to, um, to determine that if you don't want to use SQL Monitor, and some of the examples I'll use are just SQL Plus. So you can actually mine um, the uh, XML from that's uh, created as part of SQL Monitor uh, reports. And so um, 
you can do that and list it out. It makes it simpler to display, I think, um, for something like a demonstration. I highly recommend SQL Monitor Active Reports if you haven't tried them. We've talked about that many times in the past, but um, it is uh, available. And this is kind of a, a, a modification of the same um, SQL that we use to display join group usage. And one of the reasons this is at the, it won't show up in the execution plan per se, simply because it's a an execution level um, change or uh, a feature that we're using. So we're gonna do it on the fly. The optimizer doesn't actually determine whether we're gonna do use in-memory vectorization. That's something that's, um, the determination is made at runtime, which is why it shows up kind of after the fact and not in uh, the actual execution plan itself, which I'll we'll talk about a little bit. But anyways, you don't have to um, copy this down. I'll make all of this available. It's in, it's in the, the blog post. I have it there um, and I'll have it on GitHub. I have, like I said, a set of scripts and this is in there. So you could just uh, file it as, oh, there's an easier or a different way, if you will, to access that information if you want to experiment. So with that, um, we jump into the 23C part. So that was the review, kind of everything carried forward from 21C. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, to type anything in, try to get to those. Um, and so now in 23C, what we've added, um, and the developer had me rearrange this because really probably the most exciting part of this is the first one, the multi-level hash join. So we can now do in uh, in deep vector joins on multi multi level hash joins, and I'll show you a couple examples. Well, I'll show you an example of each of these um, if I don't bore you. But um, I'll also show you some uh, other interesting tidbits as part of this. But um, multi level hash joins, multiple join keys, uh, semi joins, outer joins, and um, full group by aggregation. So in I'm going to show you. We're going to get there real quick uh, in on 23C free. So it'll be 23.3, the latest 23C free version. All of this is in the code and works currently. And But my data set's pretty small. So I'll put a caveat that I have some hints in there. And the full group by aggregation comes to mind because uh, currently deep vectorization isn't used for um, vector transformations or in-memory aggregation. And so I've got some hints that uh, disable that so I can show you that if for some reason, for instance, if you have a very large query that's too determined to be too large for vector transformation to occur, it can still then use in-memory um, deep vectorization or a vector join to still speed up that join. So um, I do have some hints in here. Uh, the other issue is that my data sets are very small. I mean, we're running on 23C free. Uh, I think the SGA is uh, 15, 1,400, 1,500 mags I can show you. Um, and my data set's very small. So, so what the optimizer chooses to do uh, in this environment may be much different than one where you have a lot of data. And so that's just the caveat. I kind of had to, um, and it's no, not nothing really earth shattering, but I had to do a, a, a few things to make sure I could illustrate what's going on under the covers. And so if you see those, that's why they're there. You don't need to, to, to hint anything to take advantage of this. The optimizer is gonna decide based on cost, um, what kind of a plan, does it make sense to invoke uh, in-memory deep vectorization, do a vector join? In most cases, yes. It will even take advantage of in-memory dynamic scans if you have enough CPU horsepower where there is, I think the minimum is 24 CPUs. So um, all of that is automatic. You don't have to know any of this, but it's kind of fun to dive below the covers and, and kind of understand why or how you might be able to leverage even faster join, in this case, join performance with database and memory. So that was my um, uh, caveat to what we're going to take a look at. So I think that's all I needed to look at. I put, put into the... Um, into the presentation, a bunch of slides about semi-joins and how to look at it. If you just are looking at this, just 
quickly. Um, we're going to dive into this. So I'm, there's, I'm, there's no reason to go through it at this point. And it's also in the blog post. And then I did put a bunch of links. So we have those as well. And so that's going to, I think, terminate my uh, slide share for now. And let's go take a look at how this actually works. So I have a, uh, a terminal or a, a, a SSH session into a 23.3 database. You can see right up, up here, it's 23C free. So you can try all this out yourself. There's no um, you know, nothing secret or internal per se on any of this. Um, I've I kept the my link here. So the all these files that we're going to take a look at, I created a tar. Actually, it's right there, and I will have that on GitHub. So I'm going to upload it so you can you can see how the SQL I, how I ran the SQL. Um, you try it yourself. The data is actually taken, um, if we'll go back down. So I ran the first my first query already. So this is what I have populated in the column store currently. Um, it's basically three partitions from the line order table um, and our other rest of our SSB schema, plus a slightly modified line cust so that I could do the multi-key um, example and where it would make sense. But all of this is taken actually from our live labs environment. So I was thinking about this and the question might be, well, how, how can I, do, I don't want to build an SSB schema and generate it and all that. You could literally export, set up a live lab environment, export it and FTP it or SSH, uh, you know, copy uh, the data, the, the data pump if you wanted to, the data to duplicate it. Or you can use your own data. You don't need to, um, Use the SSB schema if you don't want. It's we're talking just normal hash joins. It just happens to be that for me, I use this data because it's um, readily available, basically. Um, and so, anyways, uh, the long story short, even though our Live Labs environment is currently only 21C because 23C GA hasn't been released, so they won't let me put up a 23C free example. Um, you could even use this data if you wanted to. So all of this is, my point of all that is all of it's freely available to you. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So there's, we've got everything populated. Notice bytes not populated is zero. This is a single instance because it's 23C free. Um, I think the, uh, actually the column store size in order to get all of this to fit is actually um, about 900 megs. I, I mean, I, oh, 800 megs. So I squeezed it all in, in 800 megs. Um, in 23C free, you're limited to two gigabytes of memory. And so you still have to fit the SGA, the PGA, you got to think things have to run. So I have an SGA of like 1400 megs and it's running on a virtual box for me. You can run it in this Docker or, or however you want to run it. There's multiple ways now that you can run 23C free, but uh, that's kind of the, the plumbing. Of what's going on and then um, if you notice I included these two scripts are literally right out of our live labs environment and that's our total space I think we I talked about this in the last live labs but notice there is a new pool a metadata pool and I did um, make the 64k pool smaller we have um, we've talked about uh, that and if um, there's a question you can look on Moss. There is an underscore parameter where you can reduce the size of the 64K pool to get all this to fit um, uh, free. Actually, I could just, will also be on video so I can just show you. Not trying to hide anything. So it's uh, in memory. If you're not aware of this, it is possible. There are generally, uh, there's not a big risk, but there is possible in a full production system, which probably won't, you're not running on 23C free, that we do reserve the 64K pool for transactional data, SMU data. And so this may be too small in a production environment, just a fair warning. But for experimentation, it's perfectly fine to shrink this down. I set it to 5%. Um, and there is a MOS note that addresses this as well. So anyways, fair warning. But um, this is how I was able to architect this so we could take a look at things. So... Uh, I, I've rambled a little bit, but uh, let's go ahead and, and get started. So what I did is I put the first, my first one, which was a single level deep vector, uh, uh, hash, sorry, vector join 
together. And this is basically a, the same query that I showed in 21C. And so um, notice I have a no vector transform since we have a group by and we do a traditional notice in the execution plan, our traditional um, it's partitioned, but we have a, a, um, a join filter create. We have a bloom filter and notice we don't see anything about deep vectorization. That's where this part comes in. That second part that I showed you in the slide that we're going to go mine the uh, SQL um, monitor code to tell us that in this case, we actually did do a deep vector join. And let me go back since I did all that very, very fast. That's literally just the SQL statement. So it's just a join between line order and date dimension. We have our join key, um, the, the order date, date key, and I um, uh, reduced it to just one year. So one of the partitions, the 97 partition, and I didn't set num width on, which I should probably do so that that number looks more reasonable. But um, bottom line is, and I did disable vector transformation here since this query is so small or the data is so small, it would have probably done a, um, a vector transformation, which kind of defeats the purpose of showing you uh, that in other cases where you don't use vector transformation for a query such as this, you can actually take advantage of um, in memory deep vectorization. So that's the 21C stuff. So we already had that. We, you've already or can see this in um, previous uh, Ask Tom sessions. And so uh, that's that's that part. So let's go ahead and get to the new stuff. So an outer join. So that was my that was my next one up was it to show an outer join. So we'll go back. That's gonna go run. So let's go take a look at this one. So here we have three table join, our line order table, which is basically our fact table. It's the large table part and supplier. And so I have an outer join. The query itself is kind of meaningless, but it's illustrative of how to do that or that deep vectorization can now support an outer join. So I've got an outer join. We have some customers that are concerned about outer join performance with in-memory hash joins. And so this is going to help make that uh, those cases where we have those kinds of hash joins faster. And so notice that's the, um, the setup of it. And um, notice we do a, a right uh, outer join. And so that shows in the execution plan, obviously, but nothing again about vectorization, in-memory deep vectorization. And so um, if we go and mine our SQL monitor data, we see that for the first join, this one, we didn't leverage uh, hash join or deep vectorization, but at this level where we actually did the join itself to the line order supplier table, we did. And again, those are gonna be runtime decisions. Um, sometimes it will make use of it in a multi-level, which I'll show you an example of. Sometimes we won't, but we will use it where we can at runtime to take advantage of database in memory uh, or in memory vectorization. It's all actually, you notice it is table access in memory full because I showed you everything is currently populated. So they're all in memory joins. This is just an additional benefit to it. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> all right, so let's do a semi join. So now this uh, was what the same basic query that I had in the blog post on um, 23C new features, which I have here in or in the um, my links on the presentation. But I wanted to talk a little bit about this. So I, um, I'm reusing it because it's illustrative of a couple of points that I wanted to share. So let's run the query. So first off, it's a... Um, semi-join. In this case, we're doing a sub-select. And again, queries aren't necessarily all that meaningful. However, it's the, it's, we're illustrating the, the point. And so we see in the execution plan that we're doing a semi-join, and it looks like a fairly normal database and memory query. And notice that we do a deep vector hash join. So that join of the two line order and part table. Notice no bloom filters. 
um, were able to leverage SIMD vector processing to do the, the joining between the, basically the small table, the large table, going back to the probing and all of the uh, um, uh, things that are done during a normal hash join, we're able to, to vectorize that and make that performance faster. Um, notice I'm also not focused on timing because let's face it, the data set I've got is so small, it's not really meaningful. It's already so fast. This becomes much more meaningful with larger data sets, but it illustrates the point, I think. And the cool part is you can try this now because it's all available 23C free. Anyways, uh, I get off topic slightly. What I wanted to show though was uh, statistics. So normally, and especially in our, like our live labs environments, I'll typically show statistics, session level statistics as well. So we'll see that we did, um, you know, how many, uh, excuse me, how many IMCUs we scanned. Notice that we have, I have both a mixture of capacity high in order to get things to fit and Corey low, which is the default for our compression level when we populate tables. Um, we see we did aggregation pushdowns. And there's a lot of information there. We've talked about some of these statistics in the past. Notice, however, there is nothing that tells us anything about SIMD vector processing. And so this is, and I talked about this in our, the 21C lab as well. Um, so the problem is that in 19C, we had exposed in-memory SIMD statistics at the session level. And starting in 21C, they were moved to the system level. Uh, literally all it is is a the statistic number was incremented high enough that it the, the session level no longer, it's, it's no longer tracked at the session level, only at the system level to make a long story short or a short story long. Um, and so it's difficult to see, well, gee, okay, you told me here that we did deep vector join, but we didn't really get to see, you know, where the benefits in the SIMD processing occurred. And so can you figure that out? And the answer is yes, it just becomes more difficult in 21C and 23C. Um, this was done in the interest of saving space. I'm pursuing trying to get at least some of the SIMD uh, statistics back at the session level. Um, I thought that the, there was the, uh, our development folks moved too many of the statistics. Hopefully I won't get in trouble for saying that. But, um, and so I am actually trying to move them back, but not all is lost. So there is a technique that I have uh, that you can use as well. And I described it uh, both in the previous Ask Tom session and in the blog post, and I'll show it to you here. Um, and so the same exact query run. So I'll back up here since it all just runs. But the same same exact query I'm running, I set statistics level on, deep vectorization. I'm going to turn it on and off. And I'm going to use an old uh, Tom Kite Ask Tom, Tom Kite um, utility called RunStats, which has been mo I've modified to take advantage of looking at system level statistics. Um, and the package is on GitHub uh, in my GitHub folder under the Ask Tom Office Hour sessions. I have the links. You can use it uh, to your heart's content. The disadvantage is since at the system level, it's an aggregation of all session level stats. It works great here because I'm a single user system. If you're in a multi-user system, which most Oracle, most normal Oracle databases are, you are not going to be able to isolate the statistics to just your session. You'll still be able to see them and certainly able to show up in a WR report or if you're mining DBA hist data, if you have, assuming you have the licensing, which SQL monitor data requires as well. Um, but anyway, so it's a very simple script. The script's available. And so what I do is I start it with deep vectorization turned off, run our query, our semi-join query. And then I mark it in the middle. The way this works is um, it, it captures statistics. Uh, it, it, you mark it as the beginning of it. You run a query, you mark it at the middle, and then you run a query and then you mark it at the end. And then it displays the statistics and compares the two runs. And that's the gist of it. Uh, this is a utility that Tom did years and years and years ago. I modified it a little um, at that time and he had posted that. And then I 
further changed it to take advantage of system model statistics. So not that big a deal, but the, the fun part is that then that gives us a view into what actually is going on within SIMD vector processing in the execution of the query. So our first run with database uh, or in-memory vectorization set to false uh, shows that we're not making use of any of the SIMD processing there. We actually get to use a little bit at that point, but uh, for the most part, the, the all of the SIMD enhancements with in-memory deep vectorization aren't available to us. And that's how it would be, it would have been in like say 19C or 21C for this kind of query because we did support semi-joins in 21C. And then we can see that we did all sorts of uh, SIMD usage in the run, in the second run, where we had left it back to the default of enabled. And so it's kind of an interesting way if you want to dive into seeing, um, you know, where the SIMD processing is uh, being used and notice that, you know, the probe calls. And so that's the gist of what we're doing because we're now in that, as I showed you in that picture before, that section where we're Normally, we would go and probe the, 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 the smaller table, the probe table. Um, we can do that with SIMD vector processing. And so this kind of gives you the, the um, indication of where the work was done. And presumably, especially in much larger working sets, that uh, performance will then come through as being enhanced performance and possibly parallelized because we can, since we're working at the IMCU level, if in-memory dynamic scans kicks in, not parallel query, although that can also help, but in-memory dynamic scans can also take advantage of this because we, in-memory dynamic scans, if you're not aware, and you can go back and look at some of our previous information, uh, lets us parallelize the, the IMCU scan. So we can do multiple IMCU scans at the same time, and that's dynamically controlled if you have enough CPU, number of CPUs, and then CPU headroom where CPUs are available because the resource manager dynamically controls that. So not to get too far abreast, but all that is combined. So like a lot of our database and memory features, we combine the, um, uh, the different features together to enhance performance. So long-winded description of what you're looking at here Again, you can do all of this, all of the, 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 there's no magic to the code. It's all available to you. I'll have it all posted if you want to go try it and play with it. But it's illustrative of, I think, of what's going on under the covers at execution time with the hash join and in-memory vectorization, deep vectorization enabled. So hopefully that works. And if you have questions, again, I'll be more than happy to try to answer them. And if I can't figure out the answer, I can certainly go back to the developer and ask them as well. But I've played with this for a while now, and it's kind of interesting um, how all this works. It's disappointing that you have to go through this to get to the, the information, and we will try to, to partially correct that with some of the key statistics and see if we can move those back at the session level, but we'll see what happens. Um, no promises. All right, so we have a couple more queries I wanted to go through. I think we're doing okay with time. And um, so that was semi-joins. Um, Multi-key multi join was the next, next topic. And this one is a little different. If you notice, whoops, I'm gonna have to run that one more time to get the execution plan. I noticed that every once in a while, my little tiny environment doesn't capture, Let's see if it comes up. Still not coming up. All right, well, I'll try one more time in a second. Um, sometimes we don't, for, I notice this uh, uh, happens every once in a while in this environment where I don't get the um, the execution plan. Bottom line is this is, uh, I noticed I did a line test because I wanted to combine keys from the, um, uh, what's, what keys did I use? From extended press, I think I got it out of the part table. And I, I customized a line cus table, actually now it's in the customer table, but so that we could get multiple keys to show a multi-key join, which is what this is trying to illustrate. Sorry, I, I had to go back and find my customization that I had made yet last night as I was working through this because I didn't have it on this environment. Um, and so we see we, we did a deep vector join here as well. 
Let's see if we can give it one more shot. Oops, one more shot to see if we can. Yeah, it's going to be stubborn. All right, I don't want to flush a shared pool or do anything to, to hose this. So in the, um, all of these query runs, I did did them last night on the same environment. Of course, it all worked there. Uh, and I so I have a text file of that as well that I'll be posting. So all of what we're looking at here in the in the terminal window is all available in a text file along with <laughs> with this execution plan that's refusing to show up for us at this point. So no no point to get too worried about it. So multi key, multi level. So this one's actually quite interesting. So let's take a look at this. Hopefully we'll get a good run out of this. Damn, not really, sorry. Um, that's unfortunate. So what I'm gonna do is, this is how it runs. Notice we're getting, we get two levels of, of hash joins. Let me, I did have the foresight to bring this up. So I'm gonna switch over to my, the text file just to show you the execution plan since it's being stubborn. Oops. Okay, so let's move over to another share. I apologize, but uh, I want to show this to you. So this is the file that I have, and literally it's the same thing we've been going through. So I made a copy of it so that you could actually just skim through this if you wanted to, and all of our stuff. And so we're down, there's our stats. So here's the multi-key query. And there's the execution plan that was being, being stubborn and not wanting to show up. And notice that we have uh, another hash group by our hash join. And we used a deep vector join at number four for that hash join right there. So that's our multi-key example. And then the multi-level example, which is right here. So that script, which I'll also supply, so it's it will be in a tar file that you can download and untar if you're interested. Um, that query, so what we're doing is we're taking line order, part, supplier, looking at the sum of the supply cost, and then doing our have our join keys. So what we wind up with is a, is a multi-level two hash joins. First joining the part and line order table and the supplier table. In this case, we didn't see that in one of the previous examples, but in this case, in both cases, we get in-memory vector joins. The interesting part about this is that notice that at this point, we have a row source we've created for this join. That row source input into the next level hash join can still take advantage of deep vectorization. That's actually pretty cool. That's the part of the multi-level join, which makes it very um, nice to be able to leverage this up through the plan. So that's actually, I think, pretty cool. And that was a, what, the reason I wanted to show that to you. So let's see if our, our, their last query works or not. And uh, if not, we'll come back. So let's go back to our window here. And uh, just for grins, I'm gonna try it one more time being stubborn. Usually it'll show up, but not always. That still is one. So we may be hosed altogether, but I'll, let's see. So I apologize for that, but we do have, I do have a record of it. And again, you can go through and try this. So this is um, a little more complicated query. This is using aggregation. So there are cases where vector transformation, I'm tempted just to go, uh, <laughs> to go mess around with the instance, but I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll resist that temptation. So I don't wanna take up a bunch of time. So we'll go, sh so that's how it would have run and we should get an execution plan. What did that execution plan look like? Let's go back to our backup, if you will. It's always nice to have a backup. So that's, the, this is the same exact query. I literally ran this last night or lately yesterday afternoon in preparation for this uh, uh, session. And we have our query, which is basically looking at, um, I hope so. Yeah, yes it is. So we have our same query, it's an aggregation. We come in in our execution plan. So rather than a vector transformation, which uh, in this case probably would have been chosen because it would have been more efficient. But again, there are cases where vector transform, either the data sets are too, will be too large, 
won't kick in. And so then in those cases, or in just a multi-level join for uh, maybe there's no aggregation um, taking place, although usually you will have aggregation, um, we have multiple levels of joins going on. Uh, and we're doing aggregation on top of that. And notice that we literally get four, four levels of vectorization as we're pushing the row source back up the execution plan. Kind of interesting. So um, those are all of the join types that are added to the, um, the 23C features that I wanted to highlight. The takeaway is you don't have to actually kind of know all this stuff. You don't have to dive into SIMD statistics if you don't want to, but it is possible to identify that you are using deep vector joins, but we'll do it automatically for you under the covers. So you don't actually have to do that. You don't have to go figure it all out. Um, there's nothing you have to change in your SQL code. Um, we'll, if, uh, if the, the way the optimizer decides to parse your query, it can take advantage of it, it will. Um, well, actually, it'll formulate a, a, your hash joins. And then at execution time, if we can take advantage of the vectorization, then we'll do that as well. So um, let's talk about some Q&A here. So uh, somebody else has had the same problem here. Um, I think in this case, because I have so little memory, typically, I think what happens is the, the shared pool where we keep in the library cache, where we keep the execution plans, it fills and we're not getting it flushed out properly. So usually in a larger environment, remember I'm really shoehorned in, uh, we have two gigabytes of memory that are available in this instance. I've set up uh, a 1400 meg SGA, if uh, I can actually show you just to illustrate the point. Those our SGA target is 1400 megs, at least 600 megs for PGA and running uh, other, uh, our, our session level information, PGA and, and other things. And then our in-memory size I showed you is 800 megs. So we're really shoehorned in to a very tight memory space. Um, this is probably, I, this in this case, if I restarted the database, it would probably work. I didn't restart it from last night, which I probably should have, um, and repopulated the data. Uh, I think the literally the issue is just uh, does, there's not enough uh, memory in the shared pool, and usually a second run it will then redisplay. It'll flush it up, and I, either it's fragmented, you know, I I, I don't know. Um, so, uh, but that's typically what's going on. I do see this occasionally, even in our live labs environment. Occasionally, this will happen. If you rerun the query, usually you'll get the execution plan. Um, in this case, looks like we're kind of stuck because probably enough's going on. And I ran all these things yesterday. So perhaps um, we're just fragmented to the point where things aren't being coalesced because we're you know, really tighter on memory than probably you would normally run in Oracle database. That's my theory. I could be proven wrong or right. I don't know. Um, next question, will these work with the vector database in the future? So this is not the same thing as what was announced and is being talked about with the deep, with the vector search in the vector database. Um, that's a whole different topic. This is this vectorization is with SIMD processing. Yes, some of that I think will take advantage of that, but it won't. It's not the same thing. So it, it's it's a, a different um, animal using. Um, vector uh, indexes to search large language models and using AI and it's a whole broad topic that, so the answer is no, this isn't the same stuff. Hopefully that's good enough for you because that's about what I can, what I can say. Um, my uh, suggestion is if you're interested in the current um, information that was talked about at uh, Database World and um, uh, about the vector processing in um, you know, searching large language models and such, that you go back and one, Loesa did a presentation. You can go to the to search on database world and you can go take a look at um, what he talked about and how that's all um, gonna play out. That's not database and memory though. So it is two separate things. Um, and uh, that's about all I can say about it. So I'm not trying to, to skirt the issue. It's just, 
Um, you know, it's Oracle and yeah, no issues. Thanks. Um, and so that's just the way it is. But uh, uh, not to say that and like a lot of things in the future, you know, we've introduced in 21C and highlighted in 23C things like um, full text columns, um, spatial. So we're, we're building into database and memory support for, you know, non-traditional relational data. And so who's to say that they won't continue to expand? Um, I don't know exactly all of the plans in that area. It is a different group doing, doing most of that work, but who's to say? Um, so the point is that database and memory supports not just your normal relational tables, but other tables as well. We've talked about that in previous Ask Tom sessions. So it's um, anywhere where we can leverage columnar formatted data, and in this case, SIMD vector processing to speed up the scan of data to do aggregation and provide analytic information, you know, database and memory is fair game. Columnar formats are fair game. And if you're on Exadata, we support it in Flash. We have hybrid columnar compression on disk. So columnar formats are, um, really a, a big advantage when you're talking analytics and trying to scan lots of data as opposed to going on a row by row basis, even index scans. A, a database of memory as we've shown in the past is much faster at that. So yeah, who's to say that um, some of the new things that are coming out or be talked about in Oracle aren't also gonna leverage columnar formatting and perhaps um, the column store. I I don't know, so to be honest. and. Um, but it would be, it's kind of cool to say, you know, it's all Oracle database. And so things can, you know, kind of, kind of neat. So with that, if there aren't any other questions, we chewed up most of the time. Um, I don't see anything. Again, I am going to post, um, obviously the video, this video, I'm recording it, will be posted. The um, um, presentation that I showed you that, kind of goes through a, a, a high level view of in the semi join the asked um, or the the scripts that I use today the um, uh, the text file that I showed you of all of this and um, and then the um, if you want to and it's actually been out there for quite a while but if you want to try you know using the run stats um, run sys stats uh, utility to be able to mine or take a look at some of the SIMD stuff that's going on at the statistics level. All that's uh, going to be on the GitHub environment. There's a link on the main page for Ask Tom, and uh, there'll be uh, you'll be able to just go and look at the video and see the, the links. Um, uh, or, or actually, you can go to our resources page and click on the link to get to the GitHub and look at all of this stuff. So anyways, it all I'll make all this available. I thank you very much for attending the session. I will take one last look for questions. Oh, thank you. Um, Rich said a great job. Um, appreciate that. And if you have future questions, if you need one that you kind of start playing around with this and get stuck, uh, I, you know, feel free to email me. I, my email address is there. That's kind of the point of having our Ask Tom sessions is that you can then go experiment with this stuff if you're interested. Again, you don't have to because it'll all just work, but it is kind of interesting to see um, where we're trying to eke out additional performance in the various parts of uh, the execution plan, not just in scanning, but also in joins, aggregations, and, and the like. So with that, if there are no other questions, I think I will go ahead and sign off. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for joining. And don't forget, uh, the next session, I'm really going to work. I, I'm really hopeful we'll get an autonomous database dedicated uh, demonstration. So I think that'll be quite interesting. So if you if you're on the cloud, if you're using autonomous database, well, in memory is available. And so um, now on ADBD, a, uh, autonomous database shared. We're working on it. Uh, it's in ADW. So basically, anywhere Oracle database runs, you know, you can run database in memory as well. So with that. I will sign off and uh, thank you very much for attending.